So for the last few years, I've been searching for ways that I can make a difference in a world that at times seems indifferent. A way that I can use my skills or willingness to learn them to make a positive change. I wasn't ready to give up my first world comforts and do as you see so many do, like fly somewhere to help build schools or wells, though I greatly admire that. To me, that seemed extreme. And besides, I thought, maybe there's a better way that I can help. As we move towards becoming a global community, we're beginning to see the rise of a currency that was previously hidden from our view, a currency that you're all already rich in, a currency which you can spend in any way you like, even on daydreams, a currency over which there is no enforcing authority other than yourself, the currency of attention. Sorry. Um. Television and the internet have given rise to the biggest information boom since the printing press. And with it comes the necessity to pick and choose at that which aligns with our goals. It's so easy to get sucked into the information whirlpools of social media and the news. But one thing I think that all this information has done for us is accelerate the process of innovation. Author Stephen Johnson and theoretical biologist Stuart Kaufman before him use a term that I love, the adjacent possible, which refers to our power to take what we have now and new information and apply transformations upon the two and maybe reveal the next step. Because of the amount that we're exposed to these days, I feel as though we're revealing more adjacent possibles than at any time in history. I feel as though we're having more ideas than at any time in history. Ideas are the inspiration for what we do with our currency. They are the signposts to a future that we want to create now. When we give attention to any idea, we begin to allow it to grow from its abstract beginnings in a single mind to a framework within physical reality where it can ultimately be realized. Sadly, ideas don't have it so easy. Some of them, it's hard to tell how many, are lost along the way of the path to reality, and they remain ideas. But why is this? I feel as though it's because they're not shared with the right people. They don't jump to the minds with the ideas that can help them become a reality, or the minds with the skills that can help them become a reality. They become paintings without a brush. One of the biggest themes in technology right now is the theme of open source. Open source is a theme that says you might not directly get paid for the work you do. You might not even get credited for it. But you can help out no matter who you are. I love it. Open source gave us Wikipedia. Sorry. The concurrent theme behind all open source projects is the theme of crowd contribution or crowdsourcing. The website Kickstarter has used this theme to allow innovators to get their products or businesses off the ground by allowing people like you and me to invest and receive a little something back. This is something we've come to know as crowdfunding. Since its launch in 2009, Kickstarter has raised over $1 billion for innovators worldwide. Open source gave us Wikipedia. It gave us most of the features of your Android phone. Crowdfunding will give us the next Zach Braff movie, a 3D printing pen, and so much more. Open source has enabled the emergence of a kind of democratic corner of the web to unfold with websites like Reddit, which allow users to vote for the contributions that they like the best. Contributions with the most votes reach the top of the page and in turn, the eyes of more people. Obviously, not all of this is productive. Some of the most viewed items on Reddit are cat pictures. And you can see why. But it's also emerged as a huge platform for news, activism, and information distribution. Reddit was influential in the education of hundreds of thousands of Americans about the Stop Online Piracy Act, or SOPA, which contained within it the power to remove from the internet any website which could be contributed to by its users. 
Thanks to the actions of some users of Reddit, amongst others, SOPA was never passed, and the internet continues to remain a platform for free speech. I even made this talk open source by writing down my initial thoughts, putting them in an open document which anybody could modify, and advertising that on Reddit. So you're not just hearing my voice right now. But the theme of open source hasn't just been around in the age of computing. Any idea worked on by a team was open source, though its door may not have been opened very far. What I'd like for us to do is to blow that door off its hinges, take every idea we have as a global community and put it somewhere that anybody else can see it and iterate upon it without having to wait for a prototype, like a worldwide brain with humans acting as neurons. Just think about that for a second. You wouldn't have access to the world's knowledge through the internet, not just that. You'd have access to its ideas, its plans for the future. But this only works if we're all willing to share. What if somebody steals my idea, you ask? I ask you, was it ever yours? The days of selling your intellectual property might be drawing to a close. Now we're starting to see donations to the people doing the best work. The band Radiohead famously showed us that a model like this can work in 2008, when they released their album In Rainbows on a pay-what-you-want basis. They made more money from digital purchases of this one album than from digital purchases of all their rest combined. And there isn't just one example, too. There are thousands of places all over the web and world where you can pay what you want for things like music, art, games, even food in some restaurants. It sounds wacky and idealistic but it's definitely something to consider. We have the infrastructure ready to share everything that we have. And sometimes a fresh look is all we need to solve a problem. How many times have you come back to something after a little while and you've realized that the solution was quite obvious? Imagine those moments, but on a global scale with everyone's ideas. Crowdsourcing seems like the next logical step. Since our beginnings, we've been increasing our sizes, from tribes, clans, small villages, towns, cities, up to present-day countries. And crowdsourcing through the internet allows us to bring down that remaining barrier of distance and provide access to platforms of worldwide collaboration that have been completely inaccessible to anyone before our time. Most commonly, people think of money when they hear the term crowdsourcing, but the concept goes so far beyond that. It's the combined efforts of anybody who wants to participate to achieve a goal. And when the entire world is ready to work together to create a present moment that we all desire, will this concept eventually bring down the imaginary lines we call borders? And I'll leave you with one final thought. Wikipedia is one of the most visited sites on the internet and we use it to crowdsource our knowledge of the past and the present. Shouldn't we be crowdsourcing our future? Thank you.